Jimmy Page. It's Good. wonderful to have you back to talk about the Zeppelin Four mm. and Houses of the Holy. Um, can I just, in your head, can I just pick you up on historically where you were? So Led Zepp Three had come out, mm. and so where 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 were you and the band then? Well, we were touring, touring, touring. I mean, that's what we were doing. Um, and it came to the point where it came to the it came to the point where another album was going to be made. I think we got into the stu we got into the studio uh, Olympic and done a couple of things. Um, we'd done a ver- version of uh, When the Levee Breaks, quite different to the uh, the version that everybody knows. And um, in effect. The the it, there was uh, the, yeah that was done earlier that was done probably at the end of uh, at the end of 1970, but we really needed to find somewhere to sort of get in and start working rehearsing and that and this this house came uh, to to well to my attention anyway and it was it was called Headley Grange it was in Hampshire and it had had other bands that had um, rehearsed there. Well, at least I know that uh, Fleetwood Mac had rehearsed there. And I thought that it would be a really, really sound idea to take on the work ethic of of, uh, the whole band going into this place with a recording truck and just everyone needed to make a commitment, you know, to uh, sort of basically eat there, sleep there and then just make music. That's what what was going to happen. And that, in effect, is what we did. And everyone uh, was up for it. Was it, did everyone say a yeah, good idea? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I elected to have the worst room, <laughs> so bedroom, you know, which was at the top of the house, and it was a bit damp and all of that. But I didn't, you know, I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't. I mean, it was most important thing was to get everybody in there and and subscribing to this this idea, and it was really really sound, and it was so productive, and it was so inspired. Um, this whole period that we were there on the first occasion, which is, in effect, the fourth album. In terms of the um, alternate stuff, Jimmy, for for just talking about Mm. Zeppelin IV, obviously you you had a lot to go through just for one, two and three. By the time you were going through stuff for four, did you have more material to think about putting on? Did you have more outtakes for four or than you'd had for one, two and three? Or? Well, what happens, well, what happens on, on four is that we have this sort of recording in, in Headley and we're experimenting because it's the first time we go in. So, as I say, there's things which are done in... Uh, in like the living room there, and the, like rock and roll, like the, the 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 drum kit is is still in the the main room there, and we're experimenting to the point where a drum kit gets set up in the hallway, uh, and the hallway is one is a hallway in a country house, large country house that it is, and it's got sort of staircases going up to two floors, and the reflective it's all wood, and the reflective uh, surfaces are just. Incredible, you know, and and so we were experimenting, and that's Levy Breaks, and mm. and um, Misty Mountain Hawk is recorded with the drums in the hall as well, but it's so close to miking. Ah, okay. Um, so we all, all the time there's this sort of uh, experimenting going on. So the the numbers that we that, that we're familiar with across the album four are obviously recorded there. Stairway is actually recorded in in Island Studios, just that that track, right? But there's three other tracks that get recorded down there during this this little time capsule of recording, and 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 they come out on physical graffiti. And one's Boogie with Stew, another one is Night Flight, and another one is Down by the Seaside. But then when you think of those numbers, they weren't going to make it on the fourth album because no, the the, the, yeah. the way that the fourth album is put together. It, 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 it purely by the placement of the songs, it ge- brings more power to the one that follows each time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do, do you, uh, did you spend a lot of time thinking about the sequence of four? Because the way it's put together, you can't ever imagine it being in a different order. Um, well, in so much as it, it, 
the time it was being worked on as like from analog and uh, to mm. to vinyl and so you'd have one side of vinyl then you'd turn it over i was keen to have one of the uh, acoustic tracks on one mm. side and one on the other and then ending up with each with each one having quite an epic so one one side would end with stairway and the other with uh, uh levy brakes it seemed like a natural process to what 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 it was going to be. Mm. So uh, the more the more yeah. it just became apparent as the, yeah. as the songs happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could feel the the, yeah. the balance of the whole thing as it was yeah. go, as, as it was all going on. I just want to talk about Battle of Evermore. Um, did you did you already have a mandolin? No. Okay. So where, how did that happen? Well, John Paul Jones bought a mandolin along. Okay. Um, it hadn't actually been used up to that point, and it was sitting on the piano. And when John Paul Jones wasn't around at this point, and I sort of... I was curious. I kept seeing this thing on the piano, and I think it was on the piano. It might have been on a speaker mm. cabinet. But no matter what, I hadn't played... Um, mandolin before it's a different tuning to guitar okay. so I thought I wonder how this works and I just started playing it and getting something out of it and before I knew where I was I'd um, I'd got the whole of the sequence of, of Battle of Evermore together now all I can say about that it was just this whole period was a really inspired period I mean you wouldn't expect something like that to just come out of you know just chance a chance encounter with an instrument, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I was I was listening to that on the train this morning, and if there is ever a song to combat hating every commuter on your train, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> like sitting there like this, <laughs> and you just sort of think, that, you know, you just want everyone to go away, but to have that, I've put, I actually put it on repeat, yeah. which you know, because it's such a. I mean, it's, if any song's going to transport you, that will. Yeah. Um, but I, I was just curious as to whether you sort of already had a mandolin, and but that's interesting. No, I didn't. No, no, no. I'd never, I'd never right. played anything in that because yeah. mandolin and violin are all the same sort of okay. tunings, and uh, yeah. I'd never come across any of that stuff. Because I love that bit in the "It Might Get Loud" documentary where you, when you go back, to yes. him, and you, you're, st- are you sitting in the garden, yes, playing it, yeah, so, yeah. That's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, nice. It was... was it nice to go back? Yeah, my, but my ma- that wasn't. John Paul Jones's mandolin. That was my. <laughs> you got had, one by now. <laughs> yeah, so, someone someone had actually given me that mandolin at one oh. point. I adore Sandy Denny, and I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, before I got to Led Zeppelin in my early musical appreciation, um, my best friend's parents were massive Fairport Convention fans, so I knew her voice from that, and I yeah. remember hearing. Step four and thinking, I'm sure that's that's her, and obviously it, yeah. it was. How did how did she actually end up on the track? I don't actually, I don't know the story. Well, we were, I mean, I think we were all collectively massive Fairport Convention fans. I mean, um, I know that um, I know John Bonham really liked. He listened to them because he really liked Dave Maddox, okay. and he knew Peggy from from there as well. Yeah. Dave Pegg, you know, they were sort of mates from there, from Birmingham. Um, I, I'd, re- I'd listened to Fairport uh, right, right from the very first album, and I just loved, well, I loved the work they did. Mm. They did, Le- and Legion Leaf was a classic album yeah. of all mm. times. Beautiful and wonderful. And her voice was just extraordinary. Um, um, and but Robert, Robert made the suggestion he'd be, he'd, that he really liked to do do this with uh, with Sandy Denny and I said well let's try and get her and and, uh, and she uh, she came in to not to Headley but she came into Ireland Studios and put the vocals on there and that very song The Battle of Evermore is on the way next the queen of life took her bow and then she turned One of my, one of the things I was thinking when I was sitting at Olympic and listening to the, you know the uh, the alternate version of Misty Mountain Heart, which is mm. when you were talking about perspectives, mm. the the alternative mix of of Misty Mountain Heart, like the drums are here yeah. and the keyboards are here and the vocals there. 
Yeah. Because the, it seems to me like it's yeah, all it's been like, swapped around. It's like you're in the recording, but you've moved to another part of the yeah. room. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's yeah. I suppose that's exactly what the idea of it all is. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a. <coughs> I mean, that's a, almost like a party song. I always think Misty Mountain Harp is no, such it's a. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I stick it on at ten o'clock at night at a yeah. party. Get everyone on the dance floor. Yeah. That that's that's another mix that's done at uh, Sunset Sound. You know, because the. As I say, the the or I have said the uh, levy breaks. The mix of that is done at Sunset Sound, and it had particular qualities there um, because it had um, state of the art equipment and the limiters, and, and it had natural echo chambers there, and that 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 really helped on the denseness of uh, of levy breaks. But it also it also gives the halo to um, Stairway to Heaven. But in, in the question of uh, Misty Mountain Hop, mm. again, the, the mix there really works well. In terms of engineering all that, it was, was it the Stones' um, mobile truck that you it, had? It was, it was the Rolling Stones' mobile, and Andy yeah. Johns was the engineer. You had an idea of what you wanted to do, and yeah. then they had to, they had to record it and make it sound. Yeah. Was it easy for them to technically do what you were well, 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 for example, on, um, with the track <coughs> of um, Levy Brace, it's a good example. Yeah. I wanted to do backwards guitar on it and various things with... Uh, the uh, the recording of the harmonica and one thing and another and and uh, we managed to do all of that there. The only problem that that I foresaw with uh, Stairway was with, with having so much fun and moving the you know getting the ju- jumps to actually sort of now take it all back and have something that was quite restrained. I thought I know how to deal with this. We'll actually do it in the, uh, in a big studio um, in uh, London. We went into Ireland Studios to record. Um, stairway because it needed it needed a lot of eye contact and you know it was really it was tricky. Did you have the idea of of stairway at Headley Grange or did it? No, I had it I had it beforehand. But the opening part it's yeah. it's very much like the st- you know I'd been playing acoustic guitar for well I was playing it that's how I managed to keep going in session world as much as anything else I was playing acoustic guitar harmonica and electric guitar <laughs> but. Um, you know, I played acoustic guitar um, at home, and certainly during the time of the Yardbirds and uh, and during the time of Led Zeppelin, I would play acoustic guitar at home. I didn't come off of tour and set up a big <sighs> amp, amp system and blare away. I'd play acoustic guitar. And so I worked out a lot, and I'd had this... Uh, this in this what we'll call the introduction of it. I had various sections that I wanted to sort of amalgamate, glue together to be able to have a piece of music that that actually would gain in momentum as it went through. There would be layers that would be unfolded, but it would keep it would keep sort of well that's it. The momentum would mm-hmm. keep moving so that the tempo from the the fragile guitar that starts it off by the end is two totally different things but that it's sort of i mean i used to play um a, a little bit of classical guitar when i had to learn to read music in the uh, in the stu- when i was doing sessions i started playing classical guitar to to okay. To very badly, I might add, <laughs> but things like the bure by Bach were the sort of things that you know I was playing, and I mean, stairways in that sort of vein. Mm-hmm. 